Ram prices are going absolutely insane, and I'm here to tell you exactly what it means and what we can do about it. Fun fact, it's nothing. We can't do anything about it. Why did that even come into mind? I have no idea. Anyway, talking about Ram, with this giant AI boon that is happening, several Ram manufacturers are pretty much having all of their stock of Ram allocated towards all these AI companies for the majority of 2026, maybe into 2027, possibly even beyond that. And generally, what that means for us as consumers is that everything is going to get more expensive unnecessarily and unfairly. RAM used to be one of those components that as it was in production longer, the prices would get lower and the sizes would go higher. And that was great for a good while. I recently was able to get 96 gigs of DDR5 RAM for I think 240 bucks, something like that. It was a really, really, really good deal. As of today, which is December the 4th, you can buy 32 gigs of RAM for about $350 and you can buy 64 gigs of RAM for almost $700. That's insane prices. So I'm here to break down what it means, why it's happening, what you need to know about the future. So this is a great little example right here of the sort of Reddit post about, you know, the AI coming to get the RAM, Micron and GPU. It's going to affect way more than that. Any single device that has RAM inside of it, if the manufacturers do not have a stockpile, it's going to go up. PCs, laptops, desktops, gaming computers, RAM sticks themselves, phones, tablets, TVs, refrigerators, if they're the smart refrigerators, everything that uses any sort of RAM, including the NVMe SSDs and some SATA-based SSDs, because those also have RAM embedded in them. And because these manufacturers are choosing to sell pretty much to AI only, it means that the entire stock is just gonna be sold. And these guys apparently have infinite money to throw at these problems. So any crumbs that are left over for us consumers or anything that has to go in anything else, prices are gonna go up quite a lot. So with that, I would definitely recommend that if there's something that you need, it's a terrible time to buy it, but it's only going to get worse. And that's the hardest part, that right now, the cheap prices that we see, 600 something dollars, $700 for 64 gigs of RAM, that could double again. I mean, it's absurd to think of, but when there's no manufacturing of this going on, and there's nothing available, nothing, nothing available, it's gonna happen. This was similar to when the shortages happened with COVID and the shutdowns, where a lot of prices of things went up. And I remember lumber was one that was just absurd in the pricing for lumber. That stabilized, it came back down. So it's most likely that RAM itself will come back down in the future. It's just a matter of when that future will be. There's also more types of RAM. Right now, we're mainly talking about DDR5, but there's going to be a new type of RAM, essentially DDR6, uh, that's going to be hopefully nicer. And then if there's enough way that they can make that, make things smaller, make the die smaller, but give you more capacity, it's possible that by time that is out, the shortage will also be over. But at the same token, if that RAM is so much better and it can run these programs and run AI better, well, that's just going to keep being a rinse and repeat cycle. Another thing that's going to be affected by the shortages are going to be the game consoles. The PS5, the Nintendo Switch, the Switch 2, your Steam Deck, everything that's also a console, the Xboxes, that's going to be hit really hard as well. Let's look at some RAM pricing real quick, just to, just to get kind of an idea of what's going on. I just went to Newegg and I just searched up DDR5 RAM. 32 gigs of RAM, $350. 16 gigs of RAM, and this is DDR, this is DDR5, $190 for 16 gigs of RAM. In my RAM video, I said that if you had 32 gigs of RAM or like less than 32 gigs of RAM, you're committing a crime. I mean, shoot, you're gonna be, <laughs> I mean, most builds, I mean, your entire computer, you're talking like half the cost almost is going to be just in RAM if you want to exceed 32 gigs of RAM. So $400 for this Corsair kit. Let's actually get to the higher end per module, like 48 gigs per module to get those 96 gig. Oh my gosh. Bro. Over $1,000 for 96 gigs of RAM? I don't even know what that. That is, oh my gosh. I don't, I don't, I don't even want to go to the next one. Let's, let's get the um, 192 gig. <laughs> I mean, it would make sense that, you know, it'd be doubled in cost. But just seeing RAM, which they don't, they don't even have. Kits, you just buy two of the other kits, it'd be fine. Ugh, two grand. When I shopped for the PC that I did a, a video on, this is essentially what we were looking at here. Oh my gosh, that RAM. Okay, I'm gonna do an exact comparison and I'm gonna pull up my video. I got this RAM for $290 
and now it's a thousand. And I got this a couple of months ago. 96 gigs of DD. Seven months ago, I guess. Whew, this is worse than I thought. <laughs> this is a lot worse than I thought it was. So you're asking yourself, what do I do? What do you do when RAM prices are this absurd? You have to make a sacrifice. If you're building a gaming PC today, I would recommend you buy the RAM first stop. Do not let the prices go up any higher. 64 gigs at $410. That's about what the RAM prices ish were maybe when DDR5 first came out. So Nvidia, and this might also be more than just Nvidia, but reportedly no longer supplying VRAM to its GPU board partners in response to the memory crunch. So what does that mean? It pretty much means that if you're Asus and PNY and MSI and you want to manufacture a graphics card, Nvidia is no longer going to sell you the, the chips to be able to do so. You'll get the die, but you're gonna have to get the memory on your own. Exactly what it says there is exactly what that means. And that would probably be, you know, you'd have to check with Asus Logistics or something to see, okay, they could normally buy RAM at this price from Nvidia. It might even have been a discount if they're buying bulk. That's usually how those things would work. So now, if they're gonna be forced to get the RAM on their own, not only does that mean potentially more sketchy quality of RAM that don't necessarily fit Nvidia standards if those existed, but it's gonna also mean that you're gonna not probably buy as much RAM. It's gonna make the prices just go up. Already they were having a hard time with a lot of manufacturers wanting to add in only eight gigs of RAM to the cards, which the minimum, bare minimum right now should be 12 gigs on any card. I'd even like to see 16 gigs be the bare minimum on any GPU, but if that's gonna make it so more eight gig cards are gonna be common. I think it's also gonna stifle a lot of growth because there's not gonna be any need for these manufacturers to develop these things for the consumers when they can just sell it all to AI. AI just needs, it consumes, you know, it just has to have. Whereas you and me, we just want more frames. So if we have a 5090, there's no reason to buy another 5090. It is, it's right there. We have 192 gigs of RAM. There's no reason to buy 192 gigs of RAM. But if they come out with something that's a 6090, oh yeah, I'd wanna buy that. If they come out with more RAM, yeah, I wanna buy that. But AI, it doesn't matter. They just need it and they just consume it. This is gonna be my worst, like saddest video I've ever made. And I think I've made a couple of those. The easiest explanation as to why this RAM shortage is happening is because there's, it's pretty much all been bought up and all spoken for, for the supplies that are out there. Cause there's a limited amount of this stuff that can be made. It's, I mean, like, like, like anything, you know, there's a limit to how much stuff can exist at any given time because the materials have to be mined, sourced, they have to be manufactured, produced, all those sort of things. And generally there's an amount of, okay, we know we're going to sell this much of a product. We know that we can produce this much of a product. That's kind of what the manufacturing does. Are there ways for them to enhance and increase that manufacturing? Probably. But the best example that I can think of off the top of my head is when the Nintendo Wii first came out. The first one, uh, there was such a shortage in that and Nintendo could not keep enough on their shelves. And it was like, we'll just make more. And Nintendo was like, well, no, we don't want to make more. We don't want to scale production because then eventually if we scale it too much, then we're going to have too much product. And that means nobody's going to be able to buy the surplus and it's going to end up costing us money. So they were just like, let's just keep as it was. And business wise, that is a smart decision. And if that's at all similar to how it would be for the PC realm and PC parts, I'd like to say that it probably is, just based on the logic of these things and how these components are manufactured. And if they were to scale anything, it would just be for the AI stuff, not for us consumers. Because even at the end of the day, we're looking at buying a PC, we're like, eh, well, maybe we don't want to spend $2,000 on this much RAM. We'll buy cheaper RAM. Whereas AI is like, we want more RAM than that. Here's a check with infinite zeros to it. Micron recently decided to get out of the game after quarter two of 2026 and focus solely on AI. And they're a big player. They make a lot of RAM for a lot of different companies. Micron has usually been relatively stable. I know that they focused with Crucial a lot. And it's one of those things that they were they were a good player in the game, pretty much. They, they were focused on stability, reliability, and they're, uh, they're shutting down. And so they just want to sell it to AI companies instead. Because Micron made RAM for a handful of different manufacturers. Micron getting out of the game, it's going to make it more difficult for the consumers because these two other manufacturers can be like, well, why shouldn't we sell it for more money? Curious question that I have about some of this RAM though, is that if we have lifetime warranties on the RAM, will you still get that RAM? Everything just points to AI infrastructure. They need to buy AI. And that's as simple as it is. RAM and everything else is going to be in an absolute cluster for the next few years because of AI. When will RAM prices go down? And so the wonderful AI talks about, you know, unlikely to drop anytime soon. And the general consensus seems to be sometime in 2027. 
a lot of it has to do with the thought that AI, the just as they say right there, bubble burst. The AI stuff is just going to break and everything's going to come crashing down, just like the dot com bust and then the housing market and then the you know, everything just like everything has to have this like, well, it's going to fall. And personally, professionally, AI has taken such amazing strides that until they can find a way to make AI do as much as it's doing now, but with way less power consumption and way less processing power and way less RAM, I don't see this as being anything that's going to change at all for at least three or four years because there's no reason for it to because we keep having all these people that keep using these things. And even if you don't want to use it, simple Google searches shove AI everywhere. Unless there's something on the economy side that's going to cause it to bust that I'm not aware of, technologically speaking, there's no reason for this to slow down in any capacity. Now, if we run out of water from cooling these things, yeah, that would probably cause it too. But then we're just going to find a way to get these things running in space, you know? I don't know. But I, I would personally expect that it's going to go several, several years. If you need something within the that has a lot of RAM within the next couple of years, I would get it sooner if you're at all capable of doing so because it's going to be almost impossible to buy it in the future. But it doesn't really matter how many components are super, super expensive. If you have one component that is so expensive that it makes it so you can't get your build, then it's just a terrible time overall. We're going to start to see those prices go up a lot in this in these uh, pre-builds and everything. And probably what's going to happen, what you're going to see is a lot of these manufacturers are going to not only raise their pricing, but they're also going to lower the options that they offer for RAM. They're going to pretty much like 32 gigs might be the norm, or they might also be trying to push the 16 gig limit as well. But you know, otherwise you're going to be looking at computers that are going to be three, four grand. And then same with, same with commercial laptops and everything as well. Once these manufacturers run out of their supply of the parts that they have, the roof is going to get blown off on all those prices. That is pretty much everything that I have for the wonderful shortage of RAM and everything else of what's going on in the kind of the, the news. So you know what's going on. I hope I can make a decent video about this, but thank you so much for watching. And remember, the Don's got your back.